Boop. When you want the orchestra to attack vigorously a note, you've got to give them a shot, almost like a punch. Boop. Like that. Boop. Now, when you want gentle sound, you want them to kind of come in very slowly and gently, you come in like this. And they come on, ah, like that. In my community, we call that a sneak attack. <laughs> As a teenager, uh, I ended up going to New York City to become a Broadway conductor. I was conducting the international company of a chorus line. The show had come to Toronto at the Royal Alex Theatre, and uh, members of the orchestra were also members of the Toronto Symphony. So um, they thought uh, I was pretty good for a kid, and uh, I came here to Toronto in 1980, and the thing changed my whole life. My mother introduced my brother and I to music when we were just babies, and she would read to us the lives of the great composers, and that provided the impetus for me to start piano, which I did at five years old. My grandmother was the one who made me practice. She was tough, very tough, but uh, in retrospect, I appreciate what she's done for me. That's me on the cover. And um, this is when I was first starting out as a symphony conductor. This is when I was really young with a lot of hair. I always love costumes, I always love sets. It was fun, it was inspiring, and the creativity behind it was just wonderful. Broadway, it's a tough environment. It's very competitive. The experience taught me to be focused, disciplined, and determined. Envelope number one. Oh my God. Yes, I remember this. This was um, the premiere of the ballet. I was exhausted, but it was a memorable and life-changing night for me. So I got the crazy idea of creating a full-scale indigenous ballet in the Land of Spirits. No one thought that producing an indigenous ballet for a million dollars was possible in the 1980s. I had everything going against me. I only had a staff of two people, so I was going to have to do most of the work myself. And then halfway through the production, the composer quit and the score was unfinished. And so the only way to get the ballet on uh, was I would have to compose the rest of the score. So it was the most challenging project for me ever. It was a phenomenal success. It was considered the biggest cultural breakthrough of the indigenous community in the country. I started the National Aboriginal Achievement Awards because Canadian society kind of diminishes who we are and they don't think we have much capability. And I knew there were many successful indigenous people out there, but nobody knows about them. So I thought this is a good thing to do to make Canadians understand that we can be as good as you are and we can do anything you can do. You're just not aware of all the talent we have. For most of my life, either as a musician or building what is today Inspire, I realized that something was missing. I mean, I was, you know, very successful and happy in some respects, but also unfulfilled in other respects. And so uh, it's been a, a real blessing having a family. We need music in this world, and we need uh, beauty in this world, and so we need musicians. We need young people going into it, and I encourage those who love it to do so. You have to work at it. You have to commit to it. You have to be passionate.